Hopefully you're excited for some JavaScript today because we're jumping into the audio API, P5 graphics, and some shader language there at the end as well. Hello and welcome to You Code Things. This is the audio tag that's gonna have our music. And this is how you connect up an audio context. So the audio context is where your audio comes in and you have to route it to an audio context destination. And we've got sound, but it's a little bit hard to debug. Luckily, Firefox has a nice audio API debugging node graph thing. And we can see exactly what we've coded here on this graph. A gain node allows you to change the volume. So we're just connecting this gain node up to our track and we're connecting the output to the destination. And this lets us see the output. It also lets us change it in real time. Oh, that's nice and quiet. An analyzer node lets us do the fast Fourier transform, which lets us divide up our sound into lots of different frequencies. And we can see that we can kind of connect it off that initial audio source. Now I'm just drawing lines between the data points in the frequency. An unideal output comes out. So I spent a really, I spent really quite some time working on this output. But basically, the main concept of the circle is you take your coordinates. We have this linear list of data. In this example, let's say we have 10 and the circle is two pi. So we divide two pi by 10 and we get this radian angle. So we loop over those 10 points and we make a unit circle, a circle that has a radius of one. But we want the different points to be different distances, have different radiuses. And we can just multiply the sine and the cosine by how far we want the radius to be. And so in this case, it's whatever we get back from our fast Fourier transform. And that's it. Here I've got a width, uh, width divided by two plus a hundred distance. My data points are too big and some weird stuff's happening so I constrain it down. That's actually looking a lot better, but uh, we want the background to fill in. That's pretty cool. So I wanted to make this spin. So this is a matrix. The matrix transform is not ideal. So I just deleted it and uh, decided to do it just with like an offset sign uh, frame count. I'm adding a number and it causes it to wobble. Those initial angle slices that we drew the circles, I'm just shifting them now. That was pretty cool. Maida, I hope that's how you pronounce it, is a kind of library for doing audio analysis. So I'm using Maida basically to figure out the loudness and I, I don't really use it for anything else. It's how I get those rings at the end. At the moment, I was just interested in making the whole thing kind of like jump with the loudness of the, the music. So after requiring Maida, you just connect it to the audio graph exactly how everything else is connected. There it is. That's how we know it's connected correctly. Now we've got a bunch of methods that are exposed that we can use to grab data. So RMS root mean square is the loudness. After some fiddling. Yeah, that's not quite right. So now it's actually pulsing with the loudness. I just tweak the radius and some of the numbers a little bit. That's pretty cool, but I want shaders. Specifically, I want that bloom. When it gets intense, I want everything to kind of flash. Luckily, there's this P5JS shader example repo, and I basically just copied like a lot of it. Uh, 
like I'm I'm pretty out of my depth. So. But uh, the example's really great. So essentially, we want to load these shaders in, and now we want to change it so that instead of drawing straight on the screen, we draw into this image. And by drawing into this image, we can then apply the shader programs on the image. It takes a bit of tweaking to get it right. You have to draw everything onto this rendered image. And then you apply the shader to the image. You also pass variables into the shader using this set uniform. So in the shader, you've got these values that can change and you pass them in here from the JavaScript, like passing in the intensity of the music. It was getting a bit confusing. So I created a canvas image, which is where I'm going to draw everything initially. And then I'm gonna pass it through the shaders. At the moment, it's just passing in variables into these shaders. And once we're done, we just draw that end result onto the screen. And so we've got a blurred circle thing. So now we just type more. All I'm doing is typing out the, the other blur dimension and then adding the blue. Now I really wanted the actual uh, intensity to change. So here I started changing the hue saturation. That was just another Google, another copy paste. But now by passing in the intensity into the shader, What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Ooh, ooh. Can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia. So the main thing done to get to this final result is I added in some circles. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you next week. Your legends.